this morning. Put your hands together.
Another day of mercy, another day of grace, another day of strength and encouragement and help. Our help comes from the Lord. Our help comes from the Lord. Oh, praise God. If you feel like you're struggling, just start praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Just start praising the Lord because the Lord inhabits praise to Him. And whatever the Lord comes into is going to be strengthened, going to be touched, going to be blessed. Amen. Aren't you glad to be here? Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? One more time, one more opportunity, one more day. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank God you're not out there in the hospital right now on the ventilator. Oh, come on. Thank God you're not in a hospital on the ventilator. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. We, do. we need to be thankful. You need to be thankful. needs before you they're going to put them up you see them there those that are live stream you see them on your screen there please help us pray for all of the many needs that are here and all of the, the needs that are around us people all around us and let's just ask God's help and strength and healing right now let's go into that throne room and bring our petition to the king Lord we love you and praise you Lord, we're nothing. We're nothing. We can't do anything except it be through you. I pray that you would bind us together. And Lord God, as a body, we speak unto the sick to be healed. In the name of Jesus. As a church body, we speak to the troubled to be at peace in Jesus' name. As a church body, I speak to the brokenhearted to be healed in Jesus' name. As a church body, we speak unto those that need a financial miracle. I speak for the doors to open financial doors to open the way to be made Lord God we're your people and we call upon your name and we lean upon you and not our own understanding and we exercise our faith in you standing upon your word in the name of Jesus we speak healing and deliverance the blessings of God the provisions of God the power of God to be upon each and every one and 
I come against the hearts that may have fear right now and command the fear to leave in the name of Jesus for there be a strength, a boldness, a courage, a faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Say it again in Jesus' name. Say it again in Jesus' name. It shall be done. Oh, I praise you, God. Come on, lift your hands and praise God for healing in your body right now. Come on, praise God, even if you didn't see the wall fall. Praise God. Praise God. The healer has come in. The healer is in the house. The healer is in the house. The healer is in the house. And he has touched me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So good to see all of you this morning. To worship the Lord with all of you this morning. God bless you each and every one of you we want you to feel welcome thank you for coming all of our guests I don't like saying visitor I like saying guest hallelujah thank you for coming being with us worshiping with us this morning those that are watching live stream God bless you Thank y'all so much for joining us. If you will, hit share and share it if you have that capability so others can enjoy what you enjoy this morning. Praise God. I want to make some announcements before we do the offering and tithes. And that is, I'm going to just encourage you, everybody, please continue your social distance. All right? Continue being safe, continuance of washing your hands frequently, amen. And in this room, I, I just ask everybody, if you will, you know, not to be touching one another. And if your pastor feels led to pray for somebody, let me be the one to touch them, amen. But don't let social distance and keep you from worship in the Lord with all of your heart with all of your soul and your mind and your strength hallelujah amen in the midst of all of this craziness we want to have church hallelujah we want to have church worship God want to praise God we're going to give the Lord everything we have. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One other announcement, and that is the Reach t-shirt, which is... Who is it? Superman? You'll see folks in here with these black t-shirts on, says Reach. They get to enjoy that one Sunday a month. First Sunday of every month. Amen. Those of you that are here might not have known this. And those that are watching live stream know we're, we're not, uh, you know, starting to wear t-shirts to church and all that. But there's a, there's a reason behind this. And that is we want you to remember giving to global missions. Reach is reaching around the world. We want to be a mission-minded church. So I just want to remind you to please don't forget to give toward global missions and be a blessing to ministry all over this world. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to wave, lift up. If you want to do both hands, great. But look around and wave and smile as big as you can. Live stream, hey, we're waving at you. Those of you with your families and your homes, y'all can shake hands and all that kind of stuff in your houses. And hallelujah. But we just want you to know you're welcome. We love you. We appreciate 
being with you and you coming and worshiping with us. God bless all of you. Amen. As you give, please be mindful of the row in front of you. Allow them to come up and give and go back to their seat before the next row. That way we'll keep from having everybody in the aisles at the same time all of that. Lord, I love you and praise you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. God, we stand upon your word. And we give in accordance as your word tells us. We stand firmly on the word of God. And we trust you, Lord, with our tithes, with our offerings. And Lord, we ask your blessing upon missionaries all over this world. And help us to all be mindful of all of the work that's going on around this world. Be a part of it. We ask your blessing upon the tithes and offering. And everybody say in Jesus' name, God bless you. Come, give as unto the Lord.
can feel his presence you need to thank God with everything within you if you can feel his presence you need to praise God with everything within you hallelujah oh praise God come on come on it's by his great mercy he allows us feel touch presence thank you Jesus thank you thank you glory to the king glory to the king glory to the king hallelujah I'm going to make a good announcement that is tonight we have a church at six o'clock hallelujah it'll be worshiping God together tonight six o'clock again Sunday evenings so hallelujah now Sunday is filled the morning again in the evening throughout the day hallelujah the only thing to do on a Sunday worship the Lord rest eat be fat and happy amen amen hallelujah and then come back again tonight and let's just see what the Lord has in store for us if you'll turn me to John chapter 4, begin reading verse 3, John, the fourth chapter, verse 3, going to be a little bit of a lengthy reading, read down through verse 10, and, and I might even uh, read some that I didn't give them the scripture for, it's just in the same area here so if you're reading your Bible you'll be on it John chapter 4 verse 3 and he left Judea and departed again into Galilee everybody say we're talking about Jesus so you know who he is 
Jesus departed, left Judea, and was going to Galilee. King James has a way of wording things in translation that some of us, you know, just kind of have a little trouble with. But the next scripture said, and he must needs go. However, how many of you must needs go somewhere? <laughs> and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, he sat on the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Give me to drink. His disciples were going away into the city to buy food. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, or that you being a Jew, asking drink of me? I am a woman of Samaria, and the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, who it is that says unto you, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. Now, I didn't give this scripture to them. I did the next one I'm going to be getting to, which is in verse 28. But I'm just going to hit verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. Now, I'm going to verse 28, which I had given that verse to them. The woman then left her water pot she went her way into the city and she said unto the, the men the people come see a man he told me all the things that ever I did is not this to Christ I didn't read through every bit of it I'll touch a little bit on it but I want to talk to you on this subject that I feel the Lord has given me today for her. not somebody but many people whether you're in this room or watching live stream the unexpected appointment the unexpected appointment will you ask the Lord to talk to you let him just get right down into your world and right down into the place where you are. God, we love you and we ask you to speak to us. Speak to us, Lord. Help our heart to be open and to receive. If there's any scales of hardness, let them fall. That our heart will be moist and soft and sensitive to receive. And everybody say in Jesus' name, you can be seated. Thank you. Standing. Life is filled with appointments. We have appointments all the time. I have two appointments tomorrow. We can't forget. We get the oil changed in our vehicles. We can't just drive down there and say, here. Now we make appointments. And then they fit you in because things are just different right now in the way they're doing things. We have appointments with a dentist, 
We have appointments with the doctors. We have appointments to get our hair beautified, fixed. We have appointments with barbers, get our hair cut. We have appointments with school teachers. Got Sister Lisa kind of looked this in. School teachers. We have appointments with business clients. We have appointments with bankers. We have appointments with the pastor. We have appointments with pest control. We have appointments with the court, appointments with attorneys. And I can go on and on and on and on, and y'all know that. We could just talk about appointments because we have so many appointments. We have appointments with carpenters and appointments with maintenance people. Every appointment, it has a place. It has a time, and it has a purpose. There's a place, there's a time, and there's a purpose. The place of Samaria at a well called Jacob's Well in Sychar. This was the place. Every appointment has a place, a time, and a purpose. If you notice, Scripture is bringing everything out. The place is Samaria at the well. It's called Jacob's Well in Sychar. The time is the sixth hour, which in the Bible means noon, 12 o'clock. Third hour would be nine. Sixth hour would be noon. The purpose is for the God of glory to meet a Samaritan woman who feels like a nothing and a nobody whose life she felt was unnoticed, another unnoticed number that nobody cares about, walking upon the face of the earth where there's a multitude of people. She's messed up. She's depleted. She is full of unhappiness. Her spirit is practically gone as far as life. She is drained, and she's walking the treadmill of misery. And she is on this round and round and round circle of life. Another week, another month, another year. Caught in this place of feeling hopeless. In John chapter 4, verse 6, and Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, thus sat on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. And there cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. You feel that you are unnoticed sometimes. You feel that you're all alone in this great big world full of people and you're going through the motion and the routine. You feel like you are the invisible, if I may say, man. The invisible woman. Invisible in the number of vast multitude of people that covers the face of this earth. Stuck in a rut on the treadmill of life. Going in the circle like being in one of those small boats with only one oar in the water. How many people know what I'm talking about this morning? I've come with some good news. The Lord knows where you are. I said the Lord knows where you are. This creator that your mind has trouble comprehending. 
The first, the last, the beginning, and the end. The one whose mercy is everlasting. He has your number. He knows where you are right now. He knows the life that you live. He knows the road you travel with that one oar. He knows the battle that you fight. He knows the thoughts that are in your mind at this very moment. He knows what weighs you down. He knows the weight that you carry. He knows the sin that entangles you. He knows the emptiness that plagues you. He knows how well you cover it up. And you do a great job. We all do. We're professionals with our own life at covering up what we're going through. But I want to preach to you today. You have a visitor. He's been waiting on you. He's the unexpected guest. An unexpected appointment. You might not have it on your calendar. And you probably didn't set it in your alarm. But I want to tell you right now, Jesus Christ did. Jesus has it on his calendar. Hallelujah. I've got some good news and bad news. The good news is the Lord's going to meet you right there where you're at. The bad news is the powers of darkness are going to get interrupted. How many of you can remember that are here right now? How many of you can remember that heavenly appointment and how the powers of darkness got interrupted in your life and the glory of the Lord changed you? And still today, we're walking from glory to glory. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you put your hands together for a minute? Come on. Glory to glory. From glory to glory. Hallelujah. The Lord has come to disrupt an appointment that you have with wrath. First Thessalonians 5 and 9. Somebody needs to hear this and you need to shout. God hath not appointed us to wrath. Let me translate. God has not given you an appointment with wrath. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. Wherever you are, hell cannot have you. Satan's plans have failed. Something greater has come into your world. The prince and the power of darkness has to leave. His plans cannot work. His devices cannot work. The very best he has cannot work. If you feel what I'm preaching this morning, you don't have to wait until I'm finished this morning. If you, wherever you are, whether you be in your house out there watching live stream, whether you be in a parking lot somewhere in your car, or whether you be inside this building, you don't have to wait until I am finished to respond to God's divine appointment. You respond unto God's divine power. Hallelujah. 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 It's because of those unexpected appointments with mercy that our appointments with wrath get canceled. Woo! 
Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. It's because of the divine appointment of the mighty God that our appointment with wrath gets canceled. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can I get an amen? Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, scripture I love to read. Verse 9, know ye not that the unrighteous are not going to inherit the kingdom of God? It's not going to happen. Be not deceived. There will not be fornicators there. There will not be idolaters there. There will not be adulterers there. There will not be the effeminate there. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. There will not be thieves in heaven. Nor coveters. Nor drunkards. Nor revelers. Nor extortioners. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. Mm. And such were some of you. You weren't going. It's just not going to be there. You had an appointment with the wrath. You had an appointment with the wrath of God. But you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus. By the Spirit of God. <laughs> oh, somewhere God showed up in your world. Hallelujah. Oh, if you could only hear the testimonies of everybody in this room. If you could only hear the testimonies of who they were, the life they were living, the things that had them. Oh, hallelujah. But God intervened canceled the appointment with his wrath and said I'm giving you an appointment that is heavenly to be saved salvation from the almighty God mm. oh come on you need to chew on that like you would chew on the best piece of steak you ever had in your whole life For those of you that don't enjoy the good steak with the best chicken you ever if you don't eat chicken, the best piece of lettuce you ever had. Oh, hallelujah. We need to chew on it. And we need to never forget. And we need to thank God. And there's somebody right now, right now, right now, the sound of this voice, right now, sitting where you once was. And God saying, I have an appointment. And I'm about to change things in your world. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. In time past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. Which is a spirit that now works in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversations in the time past and the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and we were by nature the children of wrath oh hallelujah oh hallelujah even as others brother Edwards I love it but you catch that in the, the next but God but 
God. I was headed for an appointment of wrath. Nobody wants to have that appointment. Friend, you don't want to face the wrath of God. Our world has not seen anything yet. It has not seen anything yet. When the wrath of God comes, hear me, you want to be out of here with the church. You do not want to be here when the wrath of God comes. You've never seen anything like this that's coming. Never faced anything like what's coming. The wrath of God. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sin. He hath quickened us together with Christ and by grace are we saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! We're only passing through. Ah, hallelujah. We're in a higher place. It's not a place of pride. It's not a place of look at me and how holy I am. It's a place in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In the heavenly place. I belong with him. His spirit's in me. He has broke the chains of darkness. Satan has no place in me. But the resurrection does. The resurrection does. The resurrection in life is inside of me. There's something inside of me. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not talking about an appointment you scheduled to come to church this morning. Most of you did set your alarm. I'm talking about the unexpected where mercy come walking up. Where the king of glory sits down beside you. Where the Lord of hosts over every angel over all principality and power. It was used for their travel. It was used for their journey. Hallelujah. Moses, I want to give you a lesson. When God interrupts your life and God interrupts your schedules and God interrupts the work Satan is doing, something's going to happen. Something's going to change. And as you walk on holy ground, God's going to fight your battle. God's going to heal your body. God's going to break your chains God's going to go before you and God's going to give you water in dry places hallelujah holy ground the divine intervention the unexpected meeting and here is a lady going about her daily routine going through her daily cycle Carrying those heavy water pots to the well. Samaritan, the outcast. The Jews had nothing to do with the Samaritans. This is a symbol of a spiritual condition. A person that keeps going through their routine and their cycle of life. Feeling defeated. Feeling hopeless. Feeling isolated, feeling empty, feeling confused, feeling weighed down, and feeling like a nobody. But Jesus knew the truth about her. He told her, he said, ma'am, go get your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, I know. You've been married five times. And the man you're living with is not your husband. You're talking about 
a divine appointment. You've tried everything and you're unsatisfied. You've tried everything and you're miserable still. You're talking about the walking dead? Come on. I'm preaching to people that know what it's like to be resurrected. And I'm preaching to some. You're still the walking dead. You are the walking dead. Scripture identifies it at that. The apostle Paul talks about the walking dead. 1 Timothy 5 and 6. She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she lives. I'm preaching about the walking dead. I know what it's like to be there. I know what it's like to have breath in my body, but my spirit is in a tomb. I'm a dead man in sin, living in pleasures, but dead. But Jesus had a plan. He said, I'm going to meet this lady. Hallelujah. And I'm going to give her a water of life. I'm going to change everything in her world. I'm going to give her a reason to live. I'm going to give her a purpose to live. I'm going to put joy of living in her spirit. I love the wording in the King James, John 4 and 3, and Jesus left Judea and departed again into Galilee. He must needs go through Samaria. Jesus needed to go through Samaria. Jesus had an appointment she didn't know about, the disciples didn't know about, but Jesus had an appointment. Samaria was not the place that they would travel through. You need to understand that and see it in Scripture. They bypassed that place that the Jews did not want to travel through Samaria. But he said, I have an appointment. I've got to depart and go unto Samaria. Their traveling route I read about it even before service. I just looked at it again. The Jews route of travel to Galilee. They'd go toward Jericho. Then they would make a trip around. Then they'd come back over Jericho. Uh, they had a certain way of doing this, bypassing this area. Jesus said, I'm not going to pass you by. I'm not going to bypass you. Everybody else might, but not the king of glory. I've come with a message today. I'm preaching to the walking dead this morning. I'm preaching to the walking dead this morning. Your spirit it may be dead. Your emotions may be dead. Your senses may be dead. You may not ever feel joy anymore. But Jesus come to raise the dead. That's what he does. That's who he is. He's the resurrection. He's the life. He's the water. He's come to help somebody drink from the well of salvation. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He went out of his way. He went out of his way to make sure he was there for that appointment. Hallelujah. Come on, musicians. You are more valuable than you realize. Come on, I'm preaching to you and whoever it is that God has spoken into my spirit about, whoever it is I'm speaking right now, that spirit of suicide, you have to leave and I'm speaking unto that person that feels like a nobody and you don't feel valuable you were treated in terrible ways things happen to you in life it's caused your senses to become dead I'm preaching to you today you're more important than you realize hallelujah help me for a minute Come on, I need everybody in this room. I need every, every person that will pray. I need every person that will travail with me. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah, come on. We're preaching life and death here. We're preaching right now. Come on, something's going to happen. Something's happening. You don't feel valuable. Don't feel... Like anybody knows where you are. Can I tell you something? I want to help change your perspective. The fallen angels, they're called demons, unclean spirits. 
God did not come up with a rescue plan for those angels. They are forever doomed for a lake of hell. There is no escape. There is no way out. The angels. And we think, oh, if I was just an angel. You need to be glad you're who you are. Hmm. God came up with a rescue plan. Hebrews 2 and 16, verily, he, God, took on him. And I want you to see something. You see this word says not? See that word not? He took not on him the nature of angels. I'm not going to step into the angel world and become to a place where I can rescue the fallen angels that have rebelled. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. Just in case you don't know who came into this world in flesh. Speaking to the storm, the sea, raising the dead, healing the sick, and casting out demons. Crucified as a lamb on an old rugged cross for no wrong or sin in him. I'm going to tell you who that was. God took on himself the nature, the seed of Abraham. Somebody say praise God. Somebody say praise God for this heavenly interruption that come into this world. Said, I'm going to plant a cross right in the middle of Golgotha, the place of the skull. That's what Golgotha was called, the place of the skull. I'm going to come right down in the midst of a skull. And I'm going to shed blood that's going to heal that skull down there. If you wouldn't let the blood of Jesus come into your mind right now, everything's going to change in your spirit. There's not a demon, there's not a fallen angel, there's not a power, nor a principality of anything that can control you. They don't have the power. The Almighty God said, I've got all power in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah. And what happens has got to happen in your skull right now. You've got to understand the one that's saying you are so valuable to me. I'm going to give my very all. I'm going to go through the torture and the torment and the pain and the crucifixion. Because I love you. And I'm going to rescue you. I want to save you. You're not created for the lake of fire. You're not created for hell. The Bible says hell has expanded itself. That's what the Bible said. Hell expanding itself continually for those that choose to go there. You don't have to go there. You don't have to go there. You do not have to go there. For those that choose to go there. The rescuer said, I've come to set you free. John 1 and 1 in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Settle. Settle. Don't care what explain it. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And verse 14 tells us and the Word 
was made flesh and began to dwell among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Somebody hear me today. God manifests himself in the flesh because you are so valuable to him. He wants to redeem you, save you, deliver you, fix you, heal you, and put you in glory. Oh, praise him with me right now. thirst again that satisfaction will finally be met hallelujah stand with me hallelujah in the name of Jesus right now we're not going to all feel the front here, but listen to me. There is room. If there's somebody in here, you're feeling, you're feeling it so strong. I ask you to come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's somebody in here right now. Hey Amen. I don't know. I'm not the one. I'm not the God that knows everything. Hallelujah. But I do know this. He has come. And it is an appointment. It's so you can escape wrath. It's so you can escape the path of death. Hallelujah. It's for you to be filled with power. You can overcome. Hallelujah. Whoever it is, maybe you're watching. Maybe you're watching live stream. God's got your number. God's got your number. You don't have to take that route. That's not the way. I'm telling you the way. The way is holy ground. Holy ground. Walk on holy ground on holy ground and let the power of God lead you all the way to heaven oh in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus that's it that's it just keep praying with me keep praying with me keep praying with me come on nobody looking around come on let's let God do his thing without anybody being hindered in any way come on in the name of Jesus my God is gonna put a joy in somebody's life my God is gonna put healing in somebody's spirit my God is gonna raise up the walking dead they've been the walking dead they're dead to love they're dead the senses have been messed up they're bad the spirit has been messed up but my God has a divine appointment with them you gotta be saved in that condition you got to face the wrath of God you gotta be saved you gotta come to life you gotta be healed you gotta be filled you gotta be touched Life changer. In the name of Jesus. Come on. 
Come on, there's somebody else in here. Somebody else. Hallelujah. You say, I am going to step on that holy ground. I'm going to drink from that well. In the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. Right where you are. Right where you are. Get into that closet right where you are. Close everything else out that's around you right where you are. Enter into that place. You're going to feel the presence of the Creator. You're going to feel the touch. Yeah. 
Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you can take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.